Hey guys, this is Kredi and welcome to GetUtilize.com. Today I'll be learning how to make a black line follower bot. And the best thing is, you don't need any programming. And because of the no programming thing, we'll be using analog sensors with an LDR. So I bought this kit from Vega Robokit, the best company of robotics in India. Let's go ahead and unbox this. variety of products okay. Okay, so this is basically the PCB they have given all the components and our chassis which we which were used in earlier video for the Robocon Junior thing. They have given you another PCB, but this is not exactly a PCB because there is uh, nothing printed on here. So if you're submitting this to any educational institution, this will be very supportive. Your tires, cash wheel for front support, and these are BO2 motors of 60 rpm. These are some components which you need to solder on the PCB. To your surprise, this circuit only runs on 3 volt. Some nuts and bolts. And your sensors. There you go. These are analog sensors with an LED and an LDR. 3 pin. So your power, your ground, and the central pin is for your data some other connection for your motors they have also given some description of each and every component they are providing the circuit diagram of the whole thing these are the LDRs the analog sensors on both sides coming in through and the motors I will be explaining this later and your 3 volt DC supply these are the things you will be needing for constructing this board you shall also be needing some space wires and a few cable ties to fix your PCB and your battery connector on the central body Okay, now let's go ahead and assemble our chassis. Now this is the bracket of the motor. Just hold it underneath it and try to fasten it with the fasteners or nuts and bolts.
KC is ready now. Now they have given three holes over here for the connection of your caster wheel. Now don't fasten the remaining two because you will be adding sensors over there with the help of some metal shapes provided to you. Now let's go ahead and connect these motors. completely now these are vo2 motors which are in the form of an l or right angle you can see now i haven't shouldered the points i'll tell you later or we'll shoulder them later this is a caster wheel and you may notice i have inverted the front support of the caster wheel uh, this is because we have to use the sensors now let's go ahead and put on some tires now you can see it has a notch over here which goes perfectly in this and a small screw here we go the basic chassis is ready now we shall move to the connections okay, now to begin with the connections bring in your PCB and the bag of your SMD components which they have provided and they have also given the list of what they have provided we have resistors and transistors so we also have some presets or we can call them potentiometers or 100 kilo ohms now this is the PCB they have printed the values of each and every resistor or the transistor which you have to solder in here we have a close look of your PCB now you can see we have some values of resistors such as 1k, 10k and these are the presets or the potentiometer ports here we will be having some sensor inputs here we have our two transistors one of them is PNP and the other is NPN our motor inputs, our battery inputs and our central SPST switch now let me show you all of the components these are all of your resistors now these are ranging from 50 ohms to 100 kilo ohms so with the help of VB Roy of Great Britain had a very good wife the famous resistor color code chart you have to recognize the values of each of the resistor and accordingly solder them here are the presets both of them are of 100 kilo ohms these are used to adjust the sensitivity of the LDR uh, which is used as a sensor over here both for one of one of them is for left and the other is for right you may see they have two special places over here so you can easily put in the research over there your SPST switch for turning on and off your four transistors Two of them are PNP and the remaining two are NPN. Okay, now as you'll be watching, R1 and R6 are the 50 ohm resistors. Now I'll go ahead and find a 50 ohm resistor and here you will see uh, there is a slot of 50 ohm and 50 ohm. So R1 goes here and R6 goes here or the opposite as you want. Next comes R2 and R7 which are 5 kilo ohms uh, approximately 4K7 so that is 4700 ohms. So just find where R2 and R7 are in this circuit so we will be searching for 5k here we have, we have 5k over here and the other 5k over here so these two resistors go over here similarly complete all the resistors and the presets by soldering this 
Now coming to the transistors, we have T1 and T3, the PNP transistor which is 9012. 9012 shall be going here and over here. And 9013 which is the NPN transistor shall be going over here and here. The rest remaining connections are from the motor, battery and the sensors. So I'll just give you a look of how your circuit looks after you solder all these components. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start with the soldering of our circuit. Now I have chosen some resistors. Now with the help of VBROY I determined that these resistors are of 10 kilo ohms and here is a 10 kilo ohms watt and here is for the second one. So before you actually go ahead and solder this, take a pen knife and scrape off its legs. There is some tiny coating which doesn't allow the components to get soldered on the PCB. So I'll just fix it right here. The 10k goes here and just pen them. And bring in my soldering hand and just give it a very tiny spot there you go and now just you may cut off these two legs repeat the same procedure for the remaining resistors here we go we have soldered all our resistors and our presets which is a sort of resistance too now the next thing we'll be doing is taking our transistor we have only four transistors 9013 and 9012 so it is in a shape of a D and here is one D so this is 9013 so I'll just put it inside Here we go, we have soldered all our four transistors. Now the next thing remaining on the circuit is a connection for our two motors, battery and our two sensors. So here are the pins of the sensors. So I just put them inside like this. And this is a two pin for our motor and the battery. And we better solder them. Now as you can see I have also soldered the terminals for motors and the center one is for battery. Now what remains on the whole circuit is the two sensor terminals. This is the left one and this is the right one. Now if you go ahead we can see there are three holes. The leftmost hole is for positive, the center one is for data and the rightmost is for ground. So you can see here is the sensor and we have its three cables over here. So and this is the male plug and this is the female plug. So these things are attached only in one way. Here we go. And if I try to remove it and insert it the other way around, it is not possible. So make sure you are soldering it with positive on the leftmost side. So that is goes like this. Left positive is on my left. Now take some facers and attach them to a PCB with the help of some screws provided to you and try to attach the same on the body with the help of a couple of screws. Also bring in the wires of the motors and try to solder them under. The PCB has been fixed and the motors have been soldered. Now the next thing we have to do is to fix the battery. Now I bought the cable tie from underneath the casing and the only thing you have to do is tighten it so this thing gets fit perfectly and cut the extra part to avoid interference also take another cable tie and tie around all these cables also the sensor cables and coming to the sensors especially the placement of the sensors will be giving you two options you either take metal shift like this attach it to the two holes over here something like this you can see and 
there is a hole on the sensor so you can simply join the sensor over here so one over here and the right one over here the second option is we are going to flip this whole thing and take spacers of 4.5 cm or 45 mm and we are going to elevate the sensor from this top to the bottom like this so I will actually show you how I did that here we go I have tied all the long cables with the cable tie and this was the way I was talking about connecting the sensors keep the sensors as close to the ground because these are analog sensors and we don't have a potential way to adjust its length from the ground so here it is and I have switched on the circuit so that the red LEDs are on now I haven't plugged in the motors if I plug in the motors immediately input and output process will be executed and it may follow a black line so let's go ahead and test it Even after following my procedure, uh, your bot is not following the line or it is simply not switching on. You, there might be some errors in the procedure you followed. Now, check your PCB if you have replaced any components with others. Also, check your preset because that is the main thing in adjusting the threshold value of your sensor. You will actually come to know what I am talking about when you get hands on on this PCB and this bot. The second thing is check for dry shoulder. If you get a solder spot and that spot is not shiny then it must be a dry shoulder and dry shoulder doesn't conduct so dry shoulder is one of the most error prone things in electronics and check if your power supply is correct if the polarity of your power supply is correct uh, you might sometimes exchange it from negative to positive or positive to negative and if your motors are running in the opposite direction say your left motor is moving forward and the right motor is moving backward then the only thing you have to do is you have to change the polarity of your right motor so after changing the polarity it will be moving from backward to forward also check the position of your SPST switch which is the main switch that switches on our board uh, there are markings on the PCB which says on and off so and there are only two terminals which gets shortened when you when the switch is activated so make sure you have soldered the switch in the right way and the last thing the line on your ground should be made of non-reflective material and that should be black of this so please make sure you have enclosed all the things in your mind before submitting back this project to Vega even if it's not working